Hello and welcome back to the channel from the UK in a park near my home. And in this video, I'm going to be sharing and reflecting on my experience last year visiting the border between South Korea and North Korea. After visiting Mongolia, I flew to South Korea for just a few days. My second visit, I have a few vlogs from Seoul in my channel from 2019. This time, I took the opportunity to visit the border as I didn't get to do so the first time. And then I flew to Thailand and immediately I made the Thailand videos and didn't upload this one. I thought I would add some more detail and context to it later. And the time has now come to put this video out. So I'm going to flash you back now to last year where I started the video in Seoul. Hello and welcome back to South Korea. Today I am leaving the capital Seoul to visit one of the most heavily guarded borders in the world, the border with North Korea, also known as the DMZ or as the British would say DMZ and I'm doing it with a tour company on a day trip today so they're called Here Korea. I will leave their link in the video description. Right now it is 6.30 a.m. and I have to run to meet my group and then we will make our way towards the border. So after about a 35 minute drive from Seoul, where I got picked up, we have made our way right up to the Imjingang River, which is where the DMZ starts. And to enter the DMZ, you can see there is barbed wire here by the river. You need special permission and you need to give in your passport and you get taken in transportation onto the bridge towards where the border is. The border is actually on the other side of the river, just a little bit of land further. Once you cross the river is where the border to North Korea starts. So there is a bit of a gap. It's not like the river separates the two. South Korea has a bit of leeway on the north, on the north side of the Imjingang River. You can see that the South Korean side is very well facilitated, food places, Toilets, modern souvenir shops, lots of buses for the day's tours going to the border, many companies providing the trip. In case you're a little bit murky on the history, here's a quick breakdown of how the DMZ came to be. In 1910, Japan annexed the entire Korean peninsula as a colony of the empire until 1945. The Korean peninsula was taken over by the United States and the Soviet Union, who divided it into two zones of occupation. Due to the increasing Cold War tensions, in 1948 the two zones became separate states entirely. The North, a communist-led regime under Kim Il-sung, and the South, a capitalist one under President Syngman Rhee. Both sides claimed to be the sole legitimate government of all Korea and neither accepted the border as permanent. In 1950, the North Korean forces crossed the 38th parallel into South Korea, starting a civil war. Mao's China and unofficially the Soviet Union helped fight on the side of the North and the UN, United States, UK, Turkey, Canada, Australia and many more gave support to the South. After three years of fighting and approximately three million deaths, there was a signing of an armistice agreement in 1953. The agreement saw the creation of a demilitarized buffer zone and allowed the return of prisoners of war from both sides. Today, the situation remains the same. A peace treaty has never been signed and the two Koreas still are technically at war in a frozen conflict. So before switching our transportation to a bus, which is going to take us across the river, I'm just 
going to show you a couple of places here around Imjingak Park, which is right next to where I just filmed the previous clip by the barbed wire fencing next to the river. So this park is actually dedicated to the more than 10 million families that were split following the war on the peninsula. And right here is the Bridge of Freedom. This is where an exchange took place between the North and the South of more than 12,000 prisoners of war. And this happened in 1953. At the end of the Peace Bridge here, signs and ribbons, wishes from Koreans for the uniting of family members, some drawings by children. If anyone knows why the color purple is used, you can let me know in the comments below. But sitting here at the end of the Freedom Bridge, it just shows you that even though so much time now has passed since the war, still there are many families and generations of people alive today who still have never seen their families since the 1950s or the end of the 1940s. This here is a locomotive that was destroyed by the Chinese communists. It was on its way to Pyongyang to deliver war materials. Today it resides in the south, it was stuck in the DMZ. It is a symbol of the fighting today. You can see it's riddled with bullet holes. Leaving Imjingak, we crossed the Imjing River and entered the DMZ. So having been through a passport check twice on the bus, you're not allowed to film the Korean military who check your passports. The DMZ is four kilometers wide and 240 kilometers long. And there probably couldn't be a separation of two more different countries anywhere in the world. If you can think of one, then let me know. You can see barbed wire fences here, two of them actually. And I just went down into the third infiltration tunnel. During the latter half of the 20th century, North Korea attempted to build tunnels running all the way to Seoul. And the third tunnel, which was built, you can visit today. Again, you can't take videos or pictures, which is a shame. I will take a few from the internet. What's the experience like? Well, you go 73 meters deep underground and then 265 meters of crouching with a helmet on in a narrow tunnel to reach the end. You're actually in the DMZ underground at that point. It's not really for the claustrophobic and personally, I'm not a big fan of closed spaces, but I found it fine. So if that's something to go on, you can always test how far you want to go. And then if you feel uncomfortable, you can turn back. It's fascinating because once you get to the bottom, you can glance through to the other side there are three different walls built by the South Koreans and they have sensors today to detect if anything is gonna come from the North Korean side of the tunnel. And this wasn't since 1974, so it's been quite some time. It's interesting to go down there. And in fact, the North Koreans 
use dynamite. You can see the yellow markings on the walls when you're down there. And also they tried to paint different parts of it black to convince everyone that they were actually searching for coal. But the reality is if you want to build a tunnel, then you need to build in spurts and not in direct lines. Direct lines looks very strategic and the four of them are all facing towards Seoul. So that's kind of your giveaway. Next, we made our way to the Dora Observatory. This is where you can get the best views of North Korea. Things are pretty voyeuristic. There are binoculars set up so the tourists can peek and take a look into North Korea. And I managed to see people riding bicycles and a few people walking around. And you're also able to make out Kaesong City as it was a clear day. And you'll also be able to spot the two flagpoles, the North Korean one being 160 meters high, the South Korean one 98 meters. So from this cafe at the DMZ, you can actually see everything at the Dora Observatory. Anywhere you see trees and vegetation and bushes is the south side. Once that all disappears, it's the north in the distance there. The JSA, the Joint Security Area, is over there. And you can go to the top here and look at North Korea through some binoculars, which is a very interesting experience. I just had a look myself and saw people uh, walking in the rice fields and there was riding bikes. What used to be one of the most major parts of any DMZ trip has now been taken off the itinerary. The joint security area known as the JSA is where the 1953 truce was signed and it's the only place you could walk into North Korea unless you went there by yourself on an organized tour. And there's nowhere else in South Korea you can get so close to the North Korean soldiers. Soldiers from both sides often stand meters apart staring at each other from their different buildings. And it's where all the main political events and meetings have taken place over the years, as well as a couple of violent incidents. One of the most notorious was in 1976, when two US soldiers were hacked to death by North Korean soldiers with axes after they tried to cut down a tree which was obstructing the view from a watchtower. But in 2018, it's where Kim Jong-un met South Korean President Moon and where Trump walked across the JSA into North Korea in a meeting with Kim in 2019. Since then, however, relations between the two Koreas have soured and now the JSA is off limits completely to tourists and tour groups. Following the American Travis King, who in 2023 ran across the demarcation line into North Korea during one of his tours of the DMZ. It's interesting to look out the window as your bus makes its way around the DMZ. You will see people living there. The South has deliberately tried to populate it with a couple of villages and people to grow ginseng on the farmland. Leaving the DMZ, we made our way to a modern landmark of the Korean War, which is the Gamaksang Suspension Bridge. Finishing off our day trip on this red suspension bridge here, a bit further west of where we were earlier, it's 150 meters long, was built in 2016. It's a beautiful modern suspension bridge, really highlights the natural beauty of this area by the DMZ. A lot of fighting took place here in these hills during the Korean War. The official name of the bridge is the Gloucester Heroes Bridge and it's dedicated to the 1st Battalion Gloucester Regiment of the British Army who fought in the Korean War. The 1st Battalion fought fiercely against Chinese troops but lost the battle. This bridge commemorates the sacrifices they made in a foreign land. And just to recap what I said at the beginning of the video, I took part in my DMZ tour with a company called Here Korea Travel and they're great because they specialize in smaller groups. So I had just two couples with myself along with our tour guide. And so you'll see some huge tour groups of 20 or 30 people at different times. And so this allowed for a more personalized experience where you could talk more with the guides and it just felt a little bit quieter, which is nice. 
you do need to be with some sort of tour group to visit the DMZ. So if you want to go with Here Career Travel and take up my recommendation, then I'll leave their link in the video description. And you can also check out their excellent reviews on TripAdvisor. So I hope you enjoyed this video and it gave you an idea about the history between the two nations and how one of the most contentious borders in the world is at its present state today. I am shortly embarking on my first trip in 2024. Last year I was away for six months between July and December so I've needed a long break at home until the end of January here and then very shortly I'm going to be traveling again and I cannot wait to get some videos out on the channel and keep the momentum going. So from a wintry England, I will see you on the next one.